Hello, this is Wesley Fryer, and this is a short screencast demonstrating how you can install the free learning management system Moodle onto a website using a tool called Fantastico. And I use a internet service provider or web host for my main account moving at the speed of creativity called SiteGround. And if you are looking for a web host, I would highly recommend that you look for one that will provide something called cPanel, which allows you with your web browser to administer a wide variety of options that are associated with your account, and also one that provides Fantastico. And what we see here on the window is the home page to Fantastico, and you can see that I have two existing installations that I went ahead and created with Fantastico. I have an installation of TikiWiki, which is a free wiki engine that is somewhat similar to MediaWiki, but it's a little bit different. And I also have one installation of WordPress that I installed with Fantastico. I've actually installed WordPress several other times, but I didn't install those using this. And when I want to upgrade something using Fantastico, it can be quite easy to do it because I can do it from this interface. What I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down this page till I get to the section for Moodle. And in advance of starting the screencast, I have created what's called a subdomain using cPanel. And I'm not going to demonstrate that, but what that allows me to do is rather than have people go to the website speed of creativity slash Moodle, I'm able to have a subdomain which is moodle.speedofcreativity.org. And I am about to use Moodle for two different courses that I'm going to be teaching this semester. And I want, uh, rather than upgrade Moodle, I've just decided to reinstall it and do a screencast while I'm doing that. So here I've got a description of what Moodle is, and I can click this link that says new installation of the latest version of Moodle, which is version 1.9.2. So if I was going to install this on a subdirectory of my root domain, which is speedofcreativity.org, I could just go ahead and type Moodle. But I don't want to do that. I want to be a little fancier and I'm going to put it on a subdomain. And you can see that I have all of these different subdomains. There's not any charge for configuring a subdomain. And so this is going to be moodle.speedofcreativity.org. What that allows me to do is when I want to share this website and tell people about it, that is the web address that I can provide them. So what I'm going to need to do now is put in some information. So I'm going to put in um, an administrator username that I'm going to have. And I'm just going to go ahead and put in um, admin admin right now and then after I record the screencast I'll immediately go in and change these things but obviously maybe it's not obvious uh, for sure you want to put in a secure password and use a secure password that other people are not going to be able to readily guess so now I'm going to add, do the name of the site and so I'm going to call this SOC Moodle for speed of creativity Moodle um, your site's slogan uh, I don't know what we want to do for this um, blending learning um, and please forgive the sound of the water in the background my mother is cooking so I'm here in Manhattan Kansas actually for the weekend and I've got to do a little bit of preparing for some classes mom can you hold? yeah there you go all right so I could put a description in here if I want um, these are uh, Moodle courses taught by Wesley Fryer from Edmond, Oklahoma. And this is stuff I can go in and change later. And then I'm going to need um, some things for the admin's first name and last name. So uh, I'm going to put my information here. And I'll put my contact email address. And I'm going to click Install Moodle. Now, I get an error that says that there are some conflicting file names and so that I'm going to have to do something to manually remove those files. Huh. All right. So this is something that's happening because I have actually um, done this installation previously. And what I'm going to do now is go into an FTP client, which sometimes you're going to need to do. Um, and it looks like I've got this file maybe both of these files actually. Well, the manifest file is probably what, what I'm thinking I need to delete. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that file. Go ahead and turn off my Google notifiers while we're doing this. Uh, and now let's try to see if we can do this again. We'll click back. And so we'll go ahead and click Install Moodle. 
Okay, so that manifest file must have been left from my previous installation. And what Fantastico has done, it, it has gone ahead and created a database for me to use uh, using MySQL and my web host SiteGround allows me to create an unlimited number of MySQL databases for different applications that I might want to utilize. So it's automatically created a MySQL database and it's telling me that this is the, the, the website and I just need to click this button to finish the installation. If I wasn't using Fantastico to do this, I would be downloading the source files, I would be uploading those files, and I would be doing a lot of additional things than just clicking a couple buttons. I'm going to go ahead and ask it to uh, send me the um, uh, information about this. And so the Fantastico program is going to email me those, those details. Now I can go back here to the Moodle overview, and it's going to tell me that I've got one current installation. So if I go ahead and say visit this site, and I'll load that up in a new tab. Sure enough, here it is, uh, the Speed of Creativity Moodle and I should be able to click login, log in with my username, which I will change here shortly. And here I am in the Moodle, and I can go ahead and start adding courses, building things, and uh, teaching with my Moodle. And isn't that amazing? I think it is just so incredible how many different free and open source tools, you know, learning management systems, blogging engines, all kinds of things are available with Fantastico. And as an example, I'll just go ahead and click on the Fantastico home here, and you can see that if I wanted to install a content management system, um, you know, I can do Drupal, Joomla, Mambo, PHP Nuke, all of these different things. And I don't even know what all these mean. Um, I've used Drupal and I've used um, Joomla before. Uh, but they are here, and if I would like to get more information about those, then I could go ahead and click on them, and it's going to provide me with a link to more information about it. WordPress is the blogging tool that I use, but I could use B2 Evolution or Nucleus. Um, you can see there's other things, managing customer relationships, you know, discussion boards. If I wanted to create a discussion board for a class that I was teaching, I could use PHP Bulletin Board, which is one of the most common ones. There's e-commerce things. I could create a f uh, frequently asked questions. I can create an image gallery. I can maintain a mailing list with PHP List. I can do polls and surveys. I can do project management with either dot .project or, or uh, PHP project. Um, wikis that I have installed MediaWiki and I did have to download that separately but you can install either TikiWiki or PHP Wiki with this Fantastico interface. Other kinds of scripts for instance this PHP form generator I've utilized to make a web form so that people can contact me so if they don't you know they're on a computer and they don't have email configured on that it's easier than them copying and pasting an email address going to their web mail they can simply fill out a web form um, and other things. So that is your overview of Fantastico and I would encourage you to check it out and if you're searching for a web host be sure to look for a web host that's not only very you know permissive I guess in terms of the amount of file space that they give you but also the monthly bandwidth which they provide and I think SiteGround, uh, let's go to their website, SiteGround is up to something like um, 750 gigs of web space and monthly 7,500 gigs of traffic and that really is a tremendous amount of bandwidth and so by utilizing a tool that lets you install these kind of things there's just a lot that you can practice with and I'm convinced that for instance students in, in education preparation programs that are learning about technology it, it would really behoove colleges of education to, to to basically outsource this kind of thing rather than just using tools that are right there at the university you know this costs eighty dollars a year to have this this kind of an environment to utilize and all of this is available to me as as an instructor teacher wherever I happen to go I can use you know use this Moodle for for any course that I might do whether or not my particular institution or the group that I'm working with is using a learning management system or not so check out my blog moving at speed of creativity at speedofcreativity.org. And of course, if you have any questions about this uh, or comments or feedback, I'd welcome those that you can leave on the blog post or this podcast entry.